Hi guys, I'm Rachel O'Leary and today we're out in front of my greenhouse because I want to make a container bog. These are a great space saving way to use carnivorous plants and I have a lot of carnivorous plants so I thought I would make a secondary bog garden. Uh, something that's a bit more portable, affordable and duplicable as my Bradley sink garden. Let's face it, not many of you are going to be able to do that. Um, I have this resin whiskey barrel that I got from one of the box hardware stores last year for about $11. Now last year I used it as a water garden. This year I thought it'd be perfect for a small container bog. Um, I've grabbed some leftover PVC from my fish room. I have some lava rock, some soaked peat, and some uh, sand and we're gonna make a little container bog. So the first thing you really have to think about when you want to do something like this is location. These are plants that require a ton of sun. They are full sun plants. I, originally I had wanted to put this on my deck but I just don't think it'll get enough sun for the plants to be able to flower and the flowers are spectacular so I want to make sure that happens. So I decided to put it here in front of my greenhouse. Hey guys, editing Rachel here. Uh, being a very blustery spring day, I decided it was better to do a voiceover than to continue to listen to the wind blow. So what I'm telling you here is that I found some leftover PVC from my fish room and I'm going to make basically a stand pipe. Now in my big garden, I made a grid so that the plants could be watered from the bottom evenly. But because this container is so small, I'm just going to drill holes on the sides of the pipe that are in the container at the bottom there in order for me to be able to water it from the top with my captured rainwater and water these plants from the feet. I really do find that they do best when you you're giving supplemental water to water them from underneath like that. Uh, it's super simple, super easy. Sometimes people also use a flower pot that they'll sort of sink into the top of the container and water that way. I prefer to use the PVC as it'll end up being hidden by the plant. I then grab some lava rock. I'm just putting sort of a a buffer layer in the very bottom of this container so that the standpipe doesn't get occluded and to uh, provide like a water reservoir. I use lava because I have a lot of it. Other choices could be charcoal, which could also absorb impurities or even inert gravel. I use lava again because I always have a lot of it. And again, just a few inch layer. I then took my pre-soaked peat. Again, I pre-soak it. I keep it soaking all the time in a trash can because it can be difficult to hydrate. <clears throat> as well as some black beauty sand. Black beauty sand is super cheap, completely inert, and a really great alternative to horticulture sand should you have access to it. I do a 50-50 mix. Now, many people will include perlite or sphagnum, but I find that perlite tends to float during rainy time, so I keep it simple and just do this 50-50 mix. I then poured it into the container and luckily made somehow magically the exact right amount, smoothed it out, and then gathered some plants. I also drilled just a few inches below the soil surface, uh, just small holes around the container so that should we get a lot of rain, as we are prone to in this area, that it wouldn't become standing water in there as these plants, while they do like things very, very moist, they don't want to be completely saturated. I have a bunch of pots of carnivorous plants that I've never gotten planted. Um, I generally keep them in a mortar tray all summer long. A mortar tray you can purchase for super cheap as well at the box stores. Uh, it's this. And it's, it's a really great, um, really great container for, for bog plants. But it's ugly, which is why we're upgrading to this. So I'm going to unpot these guys, trying to disrupt their roots as little as possible. Uh, plant them in there and then we'll take a look. So I planted this with Saracenia orophilia, which is one that's pretty critically threatened in the wild. Um, so I've given it most of this container. I did put a smaller pitcher plant over there and some sundews around the edges. They're still pretty much dormant, the sundews. <clears throat> I also took some live sphagnum from my other garden, as well as some mosses uh, as a top dressing to help with the soil integrity as this establishes. Uh, this plant can get massive, so we'll see how big it gets and if there is enough light um, underneath it, then I might put some fly traps and other small sundews. Again, the limiting factor is light and this is a plant that gets pretty darn big.
Now, I do really prefer to replant these guys right before the growing season. I'm a little bit late, but I think it should be okay. Um, they are starting to flower, so I really made sure to not disrupt those roots. You can see some of the little sundews. These are just filiformis, which are actually almost like weeds, but I find them to be pretty bomb-proof. Now, I do like to use the live sphagnum and live moss on the surface of a lot of my bins rather than something like pine litter, just because as those dry out, you can tell that you need to water the bog. It's just a really simple signifier. Um, all in all, this was extremely cheap, very quick and super easy. And I can't, can't wait to watch it grow and see how it does. I think this is super, super duplicable and fun and a great way to preserve plants that are threatened in the wild. So just to recap, the most important thing is location. You need full sun for these guys. You need a soil that is completely inert. My favorite is choir or peat mixed with sand. Um, and you need to be able to offer them water that has a TDS of under 100. The easiest way to do that is captured rainwater, and I can show you my system for doing that. Collect rainwater off the roof of my greenhouse into this large tote, and then just gravity feed it to a hose that I can use to water my carnivorous plants. Uh, it's really easy. You certainly don't need something this large, but with me running as many tubs as I do for both aquatic plants and my carnivorous, this is the easiest thing for me to do. Now, I do apologize for the voiceover, but I couldn't really tell it was as windy as it was. Regardless, let me know if you guys have any questions down in the comments section below. I am in Pennsylvania, where it's a uh, planting zone 6B, and this is a garden that'll be able to overwinter in place. I will need to insulate a little bit, but I think it's going to be super successful. And if you guys decide to try some of these, make sure you tag me on Instagram at my Planaholic 100 page, because I would love to see what you do with these concepts. You could use any sort of container as long as it's inert. As always, thanks for the continued support.